Hello everyone and welcome back to my ETL series. Today we are going to see a very important session which is Synapse Analytics. In the last lecture we have seen how the Databricks works and what are, are the features inside the Databricks that you can use. Now we have one more service which is integrated all together with all the ETL features as well as data warehouse and also with the data breaks earlier the synapse was called as analytics pla uh, platform system which was also called as panel data warehouse after the modification in that it became azure sql data warehouse in this last couple of years they have renamed the sql data warehouse into azure synapse analytics but with very minimal changes and nothing much was changed between SQL Data Warehouse and Synapse Analytics. But now, today, they have integrated this SQL Synapse Analytics with the whole way together with the ETL features. Like, if you see, they have launched a new portal altogether for uh, managing your Synapse Analytics all the ETL jobs that were been taken care of by data factory is also integrated into that a part of that they have also integrated it with the Databricks solution so if you want to write any Scala programming or R or Python language uh, scripts to do any modification in the data all that feature from the Databricks has been picked up and pushed into the synapse analytics solution so this altogether feature now has become a new synapse analytics with the combined feature of databricks etl jobs that is data factory and also a data warehouse so now the sql data warehouse is nothing but provisioned stl pool in synapse analytics so if you go to the portal now in the synapse analytics section you will see the provisioned sql pools which is nothing but the data warehouse solution this is all about the technology driven changes let us see more detail into the feature changes and we will also go into practical how this synapse analytics all together works into the new portal page so further if i talk about this uh, solution they are divided into four different sections so first section is a compute option the second section would be the storage option and the third section would be orchestration then fourth section would be the workspace so let's go deep into each of the section and see what all features we get inside the synapse analytic now if we consider the compute section for first there is a provisioned sql pool whenever you create a synapse analytics it's just a workspace and nothing inside that if you want to bring up your data warehousing solution you need to provision your sql pools now the second part in this uh, section, the compute section is that on-demand SQL pools. In on-demand SQL pool, you can run your scripts that you have built in your languages such as Python, Scala or many more. So that scripts you can run into this on-demand SQL pool to get your data transformed or whatever purpose you are using it for. So you can easily integrate both of them together in one single platform. So that's an on-demand SQL pool. The next part is the provisioned Spark pools to use your Spark queries on the top of your databases or data warehouses. Now the last, uh, okay. So this is all about the compute section now there is a storage section whatever you are creating like a provisioned sql pool on demand sql pool or a provisioned spark pool you have to have storage where your data will be residing right so in this platform all the data that you are using will be residing into a data lake solution which is azure data lake 
store gen2 which is integrated with storage account if you want to see the video for this i have already created another video after the storage section there comes the orchestration section so in orchestration we earlier we were using one single service which was azure data factory correct so in order to move any data from your on prem or from your storage account or from any other data sources you use azure data factory but now the azure data factory is already integrated with your synapse analytics right? so you can create the link services you can create the ir that you require then you can easily integrate all of the services that you need with your synapse analytics solution isn't it a great option right also in the data factory if you go there is one more feature which is called as azure data flow data flow is uh, nothing but you can do any kind of etl job just like the ssis packages like the sql server integration service you can map you can join any table you can do left join right join outer join inner join everything you can do in the data flow right so that also was the tool again in the azure data factory again i would say that tool is again integrated with your synapse analytics so that is again an advanced feature that is provided to you on the top of your synapse analytics so it's 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 now seamlessly integrated with all the features that has been provided in the data factory and you can do whatever you want inside the synapse analytics itself you don't have to use a separate data factory solution for driving any kind of my data migration or uh, such things when you use synapse analytics workspace now the next section is workspace now in workspace we have three options first is the synapse analytics studio it's a newly launched portal and inside that all of the features that we discussed are already integrated now the another solution that comes in the workspace is monitoring option now the monitoring option means whenever you do any kind of orchestration using your data factory pipelines or something which is already in built inside the synapse workspace you can monitor each and everything inside the monitor tab so let's say you are uh, migrating your data from your storage account blob storage account to your synapse analytics and you have built a pipeline for that so of course you need to monitor you need to have some platform which will monitor your pipeline how much data has been transferred if the pipeline success succeeded or failed so everything will be managed under the monitoring portal you don't have to separately uh create another um framework to do the auditing part where you already have the monitoring system available that's a great thing you have integrated everything almost everything in the data platform into the synapse analytics thanks to microsoft then the another solution that uh, is provided in the workspace is a management portal where you can create your link services from where you want to pull your data also you can create some integration runtime now the last point that we will discuss is about the billing options and the features that has been provided in the different compute options so one of the thing that we have discussed is dedicated sql pools so dedicated sql pools are built on the basis of per hour if you run this sql pool for 1 hour you will be charged for that even if you use it for half hour you will be charged for 1 hour this dedicated sql pool can be paused can be scaled up and scaled down as you do in your data warehouse earlier it works on t sql queries it is used for huge data set and formal modeling the second option is on demand sql pools on demand sql pools are not built on the basis of per hour 
but it is built on the basis of terabyte of data that you read amount of data that you read you will be billed for so on demand itself suggests that whenever you need you can launch this pool and you can do your data transformation and just turn it off it also works in tsql query language and it's an ad hoc feature that has been provided for the occasional accesses as i said uh, it will not be useful for storing your data but you can use it whenever you need some massive amount of transformation now the third option that you see is in the orchestration section you see the data flow the data flow will be built on the basis of executions the activity that you use it is executed you will be charged with a bill and the clusters that is being launched will also be charging you only for the uptime of the clusters whenever you use that and it is a very easy gui based data transformation the fourth option that you see here is a jupyter notebook which is also again integrated with synapse as we discussed earlier so this is going to be built for the cluster uptime so cluster and the back end would be used for these notebooks and whenever you run your scripts you will be charged and you can set that cluster to be turned off after a certain period of time if it is not being used here you can use any languages such as scala python r c sharp or even sql here you can use a dynamic workflows and you can integrate your solutions with the machine learning model well this is all about the theoretical section in the next lecture we are going to see the practical demo how you are going to launch a synapse analytics and how the workspace in practical will look like thanks for watching again and thanks for subscribing the channel hope to see you in the next session